If you're a woman and you want to do more than sit in the pews and be quiet, you want to be used by the Lord, what can you do? If you are a woman and you want to hold to biblical standards, but you want to be used by the Lord, then what is the, what is your option? Can you be a pastor? Well, I think the Bible's pretty clear that you cannot be a pastor. There are going to be those that will say differently. Can you be? Can you go out and preach and teach uh, before the men? Well, we're going to look at the scriptures in a little bit and see. Or are you just simply relegated to the pews and just have to sit and learn? And maybe you can just teach your children or other women, or is there more to it? Well, I want to broach this by looking at an interview that uh, Priscilla Shire had with Lecrae. Now, before I get to there, I want to also start off by kind of bringing a little bit of background in because I want to go first to her interview that she had with Alan Parr. There are some things that were said and there's some things that were not said. And I want you to notice, see if you can notice what was not said and then see if you can notice what was said, the rationale. Now, I'm actually wearing a hint. Now, I do wear these these sorts of shirts and sweaters often, but my hint is literally on my chest. And that that is kind of helping you to see what was said and what was not said. So without further ado, I want to go to that. And I want to li- I want you to listen carefully to what she's saying and her rationale. And then let's just kind of compare that and see maybe she's biblical. Maybe she's not. But yes, I believe very firmly in the gifting of women that God placed, Jesus himself placed value on women. We see him all throughout the scriptures reorienting Uh, people's perspective on who women were, the value that they had, and the dignity that were intrinsic to to them at the same time. Now, before we move forward, I think we need to go ahead and clear a couple things up. Obviously, God sees value in women. I mean, after all, he's the one that created them. I didn't create them, nor, nor did any other man or any other woman. God obviously sees value in women. And something that actually, I you've heard me say this before, but I actually got it from her father, Priscilla Shire's father, Tony Evans. And I'm not sure if he's holding to this anymore or not, but he had a story. He told a story about women and men in ministry. This was several years back. And you've heard me use this story before or this analogy about a semi truck, a semi 18 wheeler coming up the on ramp of a highway. And in the right lane of the highway that the semi is going to go on to is a small Volkswagen Beetle. The issue is who has to move and the issue, even though that that semi is bigger, stronger, more powerful, uh, the issue is not ability. The issue is the right of way. And so in this case, the right of way is the is the beetle in ministry. It's not necessarily about ability. It's the right of way. Who has the right of way? Who has God given that right, that privilege to? And sometimes I think that we people think that women can only be used um, to, to serve a man. Or no, and no one's saying the Bible is teaching that, and Jesus is not teaching that. Does Jesus affirm women? Yes, but in a particular way. I know that there's order in the church. I know that God has established um, roles that are not indicative of value of, of male versus female, but the roles that he has called us to. And I honor that, and I value that. So I have been very blessed to be, uh, ha- having been raised in an atmosphere where I was always encouraged to serve the Lord with my gifts, always. Now I go to the kind of church where I have a pastor that does the preaching. So there weren't any other preachers really that were preaching in our churches on Sunday, male or female. Dad, that's what dad does. Dad's a preacher. So I never really had the opportunity to see women in ministry in the way that I ended up being in ministry. So it was a little bit foreign to me because I just wasn't raised in an environment that um, allowed me to see that all the time like other now at at uh, Tony Evans Church at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, uh, at least at the time that I was there, and really even before and after, uh, Dr. Evans would preach every Sunday unless something came up or when he would customarily go on his vacation. But even then, you didn't see a woman in the pulpit preaching. And so the mindset, and I think I think correctly, is that she should not be up before the men preaching. Now, they, they do have uh, women's conferences, the Desperate for Jesus conference and other conferences where you would see a woman show up. I'm wondering, though, are things changing a bit there now? I don't know. I can't say I can't speak to it one way or the other because I'm not there. But it seems as though some things are changing and she's going to say something that caught me. I didn't I never saw this interview before I, I heard of it, but never really saw it. But she's going to say something that kind of, huh, interesting. And I mean, interesting, not necessarily in a good way. 
other people uh, were. But as the Lord began to um, point me in the direction of ministry, what I knew for sure was that my primary calling was to women. So my, my writing, um, my speaking, teaching, most of everything that I do, I know is filtered through what I, what I know and believe God has called me specifically to do, and that is ministry to women. What I've wondered... Now, before we go to the Lecrae interview, let me just say this. I think some women, some women think that it's necessarily a bad thing if your ministry is only geared towards women. There are more of them than there are of us. There's more women than there are men. And when you go to the church, there are certainly more women in the church than more than men. And I get it. You want to you want to kind of some women want to just like men want to preach to the whole. But again, just like all men can't do it, uh, women can't either. And so it, it's important to understand the roles that God has stated. And I hope you're, you're seeing some. I would encourage you to go back and watch uh, Alan Parr's interview and then watch Lecrae's interview with her. And you're going to see her saying something or not saying something that I'm going to point to in just a second. Is Have you felt those blows? Have people come at you either on one side, maybe pressuring you to do more than what you're doing, on the other side, condemning you for doing what you're doing. Have mm -hmm. you felt any of that? Yes. Okay. And I've been in the middle of that, you mm. know what I mean, in terms of hearing both sides. Okay. So most of the time, I, I just kind of remove myself from the con conversation. Mm. Um, and I just kind of go back to saying to the Lord, what is it that you've called me to do? Yeah. Now, two things. If you have some sort of talent, if you seem to be able to speak or carry yourself well, have understanding the Bible, folks are going to want to put you out there and even more. So, and I've seen a woman, maybe she got up and spoke and said something, and then someone wants to use her some more and some more and some more. There is nothing more intoxicating than the applause of other people when they pat you on the back and say, wow, that was wonderful. You should do this more. Uh, there's something, well, is there something to this? Maybe, maybe this is what God has me to do. Maybe this is where the Lord wants me. And then what ends up happening is your emotions filled with or infused with your desires end up taking the place of what God said in his word and you saying that this is what God is saying to me, this, this is God's purpose, purpose for me. God is moving me in this ministry. This is what God wants me to do. God has made me, God has blessed me for this. And what ends up happening again, you take that and make that be uh, the most important reason as to why you pursue a ministry that the Bible did not call you to. That's it. Mm. Um, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't speak in a church on a Sunday probably until, you know, you know, I've been doing, I've been in ministry for 25 years now, Yeah. probably 15 years ago. So I was, I was for a very long time saying no to wow. all Sunday morning invitations. Wow. Mostly because I did not grow up in an environment where I saw women preaching. Mm -hmm. Dad didn't think it was wrong mm -hmm. for women to preach or anything like that. It's just, he's the preacher at yeah. our church. You know, yeah. He preached every Sunday. Now, that's interesting because I'm trying to, you know, you're trying to dissect what she's saying when she says, Dad, that is Dr. Evans, didn't think that there was anything wrong with women preaching. I wonder what she meant by that. Now, let me be clear. The role for a woman to get up and preach, a woman can preach, but it's in what setting? To who? How is it done? Here's what I mean. Can a woman go and preach to another woman? Well, sure. But can she preach to a man? who's unsaved. Well, she can. As a matter of fact, speaking about women in ministry, my third oldest child, Hannah, is actually out of the country now. She is she is on her way to, uh, to Africa uh, on a mission trip. And so she likes doing missions. And she was just actually in Colorado and she was sharing the gospel. I think I told you guys a story that some some guy came up to her and tried to hit on her and asked her for her number. And she said, no, you can't have my number, but I'll give you a track. And so that opened the opportunity to to share the gospel. And then the man ultimately, uh, as far as they know, at least publicly, he professed Christ. We don't know what happened later, uh, but that's what that's a role that a woman can do, can be used in. And what is she doing? She is proclaiming she's preaching the gospel to this man, to this unsaved man. Now, is she exercising authority or teaching over him? No, the Bible's clear. Let's matter of fact, let's pull this up in First Timothy, chapter two, verse 12. Paul says, I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over man, but to remain quiet. And he gives his rationale, not because of any sort of cultural issues or anything like that. He says, for it was Adam 
who was first created and then Eve. And so he gives the rationale. He, re, he re, refers back to the creation, back to the garden. And so can a woman be used to preach the gospel to a to a man? Well, even in the Bible, we have that in, in John 4, the woman at the well who meets Jesus. And what does she do? She goes and she tells uh, the people in her in her town, in her village, and they come back to him. And so you can do it that way. There is a role for a woman uh, to be used in ministry to serve the Lord. We see that. But it's what capacity, in an official capacity, in a particular office, therein lies the issue. Every Sunday. Yeah. So I, I didn't see that. And for me, it didn't feel comfortable. Mm. And I just felt like, you know what? If the Lord wants to put me in that space, I know he's not going to ask me to push past a feeling that to me felt weighty, like conviction at the time. Mm -hmm. And then I remember a pastor saying to me, African-American pastor, um, he said, do you realize that some churches in the African-American community, the only women's conference they have is Women's Day? So what she's saying is, and some might, might not get this, is that um, her hesitancy to preach on Sundays what about when certain certain churches have their women's um, Sunday or conference or what have you on that particular Sunday? And so if you decide that you don't want to do that, uh, preach on Sundays, well, then what about here? Well, no one's saying that you can't have that rule and, and still go to one of these um, w women's day or anything with these little programs like that. You can still do that. But what's happening is we're get, get, getting anecdotal reasoning uh, as to why you can go and do that. And again, what you're going to notice, if you haven't noticed yet, and you can go back and watch the videos, is you're not going to have scriptures being presented to say this is why you should do it. Uh, you're not, you, you don't see that. And that's a problem. Yeah. Oh, and it's like that kind of traditional black church setting, Women's Day. Wow. So they said that is the women's conference or that's the women's retreat. So if you're saying no to Women's Day at all of these retreats or, or churches, then this particular group of women may never actually have an opportunity to benefit from your ministry. Mm -hmm. That was the first time it, it kind of made me pause mm -hmm. and think, mm -hmm. wait a minute, Lord, let me wrestle with this. Where would you like for me to go? So, so I had to step into what would have been a space that didn't feel like I remember the first time I uh, spoke on a Sunday somewhere. It was at Dwight McKissick's church cornerstone in Arlington. Mm. And I remember feeling this is the best space for me to start because I, I feel a little nervous about it. But I know Dwight McKissick loves me yeah. and cares for me like a dad would. Yeah. Um, and I also... What's funny, what's interesting is um, I don't know Dwight McKissick. I've got to meet him a few times. Um, but he has always been the person that has kind of been some... Now, I don't know if he's even still in the, uh, the SBC. I know he used to be. I believe he used to be. Um, but there was an issue that came up some time ago about... 20 something years ago, 20 years ago about women preaching and so forth. And so it's just interesting that she says that she brings his name up. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I also went to my pastor who happens to be my dad. And um, so I'm like, you know, 30 years old at the time. And I just said, dad, I need to know as my spiritual covering, mm -hmm. if I have your blessing mm -hmm. to do this. He said, yes. I asked my husband, do I have your blessing and your covering because if yeah. I'm going in, I, I need to go covered. Yeah. Y'all covering me. And if both of you are, then I'm good. What? Now, a couple of things. Let me just deal with this issue about covering, because I think people are using this as a way to usurp the scriptures. And I think what's happening is we're kind of misunderstanding what it means for this covering. And so in First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse seven, verse four, uh, every man who has something on his head while praying, prophesy and disgrace his head. But every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her. Now, in this case, we are talking about an actual literal covering. This is kind of the, the culture. And having this physical covering over your head, over your hair, is to symbolize that you are not usurping authority, that you do have, that you're under authority. Now, this is not that she's that anyone that's going out and preaching in an office in official capacity over men teaching men. This is not what they're saying. This is her going and she might be, um, she might say something. Now, what, what is meant here by prophesying? Uh, we're not sure. We're not sure, but let's, let's, so let's read it again. Um, verse five, but every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her head for she is one and the same and the woman whose head is shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, let her also have her hair cut off. But it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off for her head shaved uh, or her head shaved. Let her cover her head. 
For a man ought not to shave his head or have his head covered since he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. For man does not originate from woman, but woman from man. For indeed, man was not created for the woman's sake, but woman for the man's sake. Therefore, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Now, a couple things. I want you to notice what we're talking about here, what we're not talking about here. This isn't necessarily, this isn't necessarily a church service. This isn't the, the, the gathering, um, what to do once you come inside the building. I think what's happened is when we get to 1 Corinthians, we think that it's all about when you come together inside the building, as though Paul is never writing about what's happening outside the gathering. Is that the point here? The point is, she might be in the town square. She might be like my daughter, uh, if this were 2,000 years ago. She might be like the, the woman at the well, having her head covered as though she's just not out here uh, doing her own thing. So this is not to be used or be taken that she is now has a license to go and preach to other men uh, or to teach or to usurp any sort of authority. Now, do I think she's in that capacity, usurping authority? No, but teaching, possibly. And so the appearance might be uh, uh, the wrong thing. Can a woman ever get up? There are times where I've seen and I've been okay with it, a woman getting up and let's say maybe giving her testimony or speaking about certain things and she's not necessarily teaching or usurping authority. But the bigger issue is, is that getting approval from your father, from your husband, from your pastor is not a, a key to go to do an in round what the scriptures say. When I came to the Lord, um, it was it was a hodgepodge of different views and different theological perspectives. But I, I landed on like an extreme end of conservative like views. Mm -hmm. And so to see a woman preaching was like it just kind of threw you off. Yeah, it was like, wait, totally. what's totally. happening? So now that part was was also a bit troubling. He said he landed on an extreme view of conservatism or Christianity. And so in that extreme conservative view, we didn't see women preaching as though when you see a woman preaching, um, that's only if you leave this this extremist type uh, conservative view. Now, remember, this is the same person who's OK with um, uh, pr promoting p politicians who are for what the Bible would call certainly extreme on the left side, uh, such as abortion and gay rights and things like that. So. Take that for what it's worth, but the fact that how, how he couched that, now she agreed with that. The point of the matter is, can a woman ever say anything? Well, sure. Now, this part here in 1 Corinthians 14, women are to keep silent in churches. They are not permitted to speak, but are subject, but are to subject themselves, just as the law also said. Doesn't mean that she can't open her mouth and say a word. That is not what it's saying. But she didn't have the ability, the right to get up and, and kind of start leading men or teaching men or, or any of those things. Now, someone will say, well, that's because of that particular culture, that time, because of there was disorder and disunity in the church. But remember, if that's the case, why didn't Paul address the other men who were the prime causes for this disunity, for this for this chaotic um, gatherings? Because remember, that's what Paul is, is addressing. But he, never, he didn't say that about men or about certain men. He said this to women and they were not the biggest problem in the church. But the point is, it's not saying that they can't say anything. It's just them getting up and taking liberties and taking advantage of opportunities that they're not supposed to. Remember, now, if and I don't think that Priscilla is bringing this up either. I don't think I've never heard her say that she thinks it's OK for a woman to be a pastor. I believe I believe she she agrees that they cannot be a pastor. But in terms of teaching over a man or preaching over a man, that's where I think she feels as though you could do so if you have a covering. And you cannot, again, the, that is clear. You cannot use Paul's words here about a covering to usurp Paul's words here about teaching over or having use or usurp an authority over a man. You cannot do that. And again, what's interesting is, and we see this more and more, we see people wanting to do things and to claim things that are not scriptural. It's a feeling or I've been gifted in this area or someone else uh, gave or validated me and said that it was okay. They, they don't trump the scriptures. And I think that was a part that's a, that's a bit troubling. There is a role for women to play. And I believe so. Again, my daughter's doing so. My daughter is doing her very best to try to serve as much as she can, such as with my other. Um, I, I've got another daughter who's trying to do the exact same thing. And so, yeah, there is a role. But again, there's also some roles that cannot be 
um, usurped or cannot be um, women cannot be in those particular positions, not because I say or think so, but because the Bible says so. And it's not that they don't have the ability to speak well or to teach or to understand the scriptures. They've got eyes, they've got ears, they can sit and read and understand this stuff and they can be excited about the Lord. And you can let that show up in various different ways. But there's some ways you absolutely cannot, just like for all men, uh, this opportunity or this certain portions of the ministries are not open to all men. Uh, even though you you know the scriptures and you're excited, everybody doesn't qualify. And so that's the issue. And so we've got to let the Lord, the Lord through his word, tell us who can, how, when, and in what fashion, not whether someone gives us permission by way of some sort of covering or not. Amen. Amen.